building resilience is about enabling the person or the system or the city to actually rebound more quickly, perhaps fail more safely, um, to be able to withstand those shocks and to not have them really create the kind of devastation that we're seeing uh, at the present time. The response the foundation made to New Orleans in the wake of Katrina was one of the fundamental pieces of work that helped us realize how important it was to think in terms of resilience and not just um, response and rebuilding. So we launched this Asian Cities Climate Change Resilience Network, which has been a very large long-term initiative. It started with 10 cities in four countries in Asia, and now it's much bigger than that. Museum of Modern Art had been engaging uh, uh, Princeton scholar Keith Nordenson around some uh, scenarios in terms of the impending sea level rise of New York City. And what could be done about this? How could you ultimately redesign New York City so that New York City was able to handle all of these issues? But this all remained in our mind very sort of far off. This was very, very forward looking, which was what was great about it. But then two years later, Hurricane Sandy hit. The result of, of Sandy pointed to the complexity of the problem across you know, ecological as well as, as other uh, factors. And I think the fact that we had this proposal on the table and that a lot of people were familiar with it led to a more broad-based response um, by the city. In response to Superstorm Sandy, Governor Cuomo established NYS 2100, which was a commission to really think about the long-term rebuild of New York State. The recommendations of the New York State 2100 Commission have really had a, a pivotal impact, not only on how the state's approach and work on resilience, but the federal government and the city as well. And we've seen that those recommendations have shaped people's approaches, shaped some of the responses and the infrastructure that's being built. And one of the things that's been very encouraging is how the commission talked about and recognized the role that natural infrastructure plays today in protecting our coastlines and enhancing resilience, improving quality of life, and supporting our economic growth, and recognizing that needs to be continued and invested in going forward. On the community level, uh, it's probably the most uh, tangible recommendation that we'll see over the next couple of years is uh, a recommendation that was picked up, a race to the top style funding uh, for sandy affected communities. 520 miles of coastline in New York City, there is a lot of expense and a lot of work that needs to be done to upgrade our existing infrastructure, to build new infrastructure, and we need to think about all solutions on the table. What Hurricane Sandy did was open a dialogue about the need to more comprehensively prepare this region and this city for climate change, for future disasters and other shocks. So launching 100 resilient cities in the wake of that made a lot of sense. And we've been able to take what we've learned internationally and domestically and apply that locally. Um, in the future, uh, the, the Resilient Institute at Jamaica Bay could really become the hub of activity, the hub of science, the hub of learning, and the hub of innovation uh, for not just the region, not just the East Coast, but the country. And Rockefeller was there at the beginning. We're, we're there right now and we will continue to be there in the future.